Since 2013, Interpol has implemented a range of capacity building initiatives on counterterrorism in Asia and the Pacific, including training sessions, operations, and the delivery of equipment. Our projects have been instrumental in developing the capacity of member countries in the region to utilize Interpol's tools and services more efficiently and to expand the use of products beyond the existing network of national central bureaus to counter terrorism units and border security agencies. Within the scope of these projects, we have succeeded in integrating other key law enforcement agencies in the region, such as immigration, customs, prosecutors, and Coast Guard. Today, in a continuation of this holistic approach, it is with great honor for Interpol to host such a major event with an emphasis on forensics for the first time here in Singapore. With this workshop, Interpol is entering a promising new part of its capacity building and training scheme. To give you an example, only 13% of the people and participants gathered in this auditorium today come from our NCBs. Only 13%. That is how we are expanding Interpol. For this reason, I would like to start by providing you with a brief overview of the Interpol Capacity Building and Training Directorate. Then I will provide a few additional details about the structure of our capacity, as well as the counterterrorism work that we are doing and the objectives of this workshop. While we officially opened this beautiful building less than a year ago, it's important to note that my directorate began its transfer from the General Secretariat in Lyon to Singapore in July 2014. Our relocation to Southeast Asia, although global, also presented an excellent opportunity to rebalance the distribution of Interpol's capacity building and training programs and give a much higher profile to this important region. Just this year alone, we are developing and implementing eight capacity building projects which take place in Asia, seven of which are brand new initiatives in the field of cybercrime, maritime security, counterterrorism, and migrant smuggling. Throughout the different crime areas, the common denominators in the projects are clear. To increase the knowledge and use of Interpol's tools and services, to share best practices in international police cooperation, to provide a better understanding of how our General Secretariat can support member countries, and above all, for training to result in operations on the ground. Esteemed participants, operational results are the main principles that guide all of Interpol's activities when delivering its tools and services programs, so that these programs can lead to concrete results that respond to the day-to-day -day challenges faced by law enforcement on the ground. This project, currently in its second year, adopts a holistic approach in developing counterterrorism capabilities by fo focusing on three key areas, forensic skills, investigative skills, and the use of Interpol's tools and services. Launched in August 2014 in Malaysia, the first year of this program saw more than 100 law enforcement officials in the region participate, hosted by Philippines, Indonesia, Brunei, and Vietnam. The initial training phase accumulated in the successful Operation Sunbird last March 2015. The first border security operation coordinated here within the Interpol Global Complex for Innovation. During Operation Sunbird, intensified border control checks were carried out in nine ASEAN member countries at 15 different operational sites covering sea, air and land borders. The implementation of these operational sites was carried out by national law enforcement agencies, mainly from immigration, police and NCBs. Additionally, representatives from eight participating countries were deployed to the Operational Coordination Unit set up in the Command and Control Centre here in IGCI in Singapore. The increased consultation of Interpol's databases at the designated international borders over the course of the 10-day operation combined with the accelerated pace of information exchange, resulted in the following. More than 700,000 searches against our databases. Nine matches on passports reported to be lost or stolen. The identification of more than 100 priority wanted criminals and terrorists, and the arrest of five internationally wanted persons.
Ladies and gentlemen, that was in 10 days, and that shows the power of Interpol's databases if they are used properly and regularly. Moreover, Sunbird facilitated secure information sharing among participating Asian countries on foreign terrorist fighters believed to be traveling in Southeast Asia, one of the major security challenges in the region. This is to say, at the heart of Interpol's capacity building methodology is the expansion of training initiatives into operational exercises has proven very successful. Our efforts are focused on providing law enforcement officers participating in our training sessions with the opportunity to implement the knowledge and skills obtained in the classroom and reinforce the network of contacts during joint operations. This workshop, which aims to foster awareness of Interpol's forensic tools and resources, as well as the sharing of best practices in the field, is a unique occasion to discuss the future of forensics and policing within a trusted environment where delegates from NCB, counterterrorism units, forensic managers, and other public sector representatives from Southeast Asia and the Pacific can openly discuss the challenges you face. Today we have amongst us several officers that played a key role in the first year of this project, and I encourage them and I encourage you to share experiences them to those of you that are new to the Interpol family. I am confident that you will take advantage of this unique opportunity now that for the first time in this project, all 10 ASEAN countries are present, as well as distinguished delegations from other countries in Asia and the Pacific region. I call upon all of the delegations present to talk about your current capabilities, to share with us your needs in the field of forensics and to include a, front, a stronger forensic component in future operational exercises that will result from this project. Cooperation is foremost among Interpol's objectives. With 190 member countries, our reach is global, just like the vision we strive to achieve. I also hope you will go back to your countries aware of the potential of our forensics databases and you will promote and increase the quality and the use of the data exchanged in this region. Furthermore, I invite you to interact with our industry partners at this event who have set up exhibition booths outside the auditorium so that you can learn about new advances being made in the field, as these company might be future partners with whom you may work. Finally, I would like to invite you all to stop at the Interpol booth for the demonstration of the Interpol Global Learning Centre. The IGLC is a web-based e-learning portal providing a comprehensive range of online learning opportunities not only to Interpol NCB members but also to the wider policing community. With IGLC, we are encouraging the interactive sharing of knowledge and best practices among Interpol member countries and we aim to increase awareness of our services and databases and we provide you a secure platform to share your expertise. For those of you that might ask who can access the IGLC and how, please note that all law enforcement officers have the right to IGLC's free e-learning modules. Therefore, I encourage you to stop by the Interpol booth and browse the catalog of over 100 e-learning courses and over 300 modules that are available to you through your NCB or your representative country. Ladies and gentlemen, by establishing the IGLC in Singapore, Interpol has ensured that it is best placed to support member countries in this region to address threats such as terrorism through innovation and training. While we have achieved many successes, a long journey is ahead. The extended length of this program allows us to constantly adapt our activities to the ever-evolving threat of terrorism, developments in the region's security landscape, and the best practices derived from previous activities. I see dedicated experts and professionals coming from different backgrounds in Asia and the Pacific region gathered around a shared objective, making the most of international cooperation to best treat transnational threats. I do encourage you to listen to the very discouraging statistics that my colleague has presented today. If you take one thing away from this conference, it should be how is this region going to increase the input into those databases and the use of those databases. Let's make that one of our main objectives. 
I know this workshop will be uh, very successful. And in closing, I would really like to thank uh, all of the people at IGLC, IGCI and my team who have been involved in uh, organizing it. It looks very simple sometimes when 150 come, people come in and sit down and everything runs smoothly. Almost everything runs smoothly. And um, I can assure you uh, there's a lot of work that is done behind the scenes and I'm, I'm very proud of the team and all of the work that people are doing here uh, in this uh, beautiful building. I will be in and out of several of your um, workshops. I note that many of you have commented that you're used to stand up uh, lecture formatting uh, type programs and that you are now going to experience several breakout rooms. Uh, these breakout rooms are to encourage dialogue and enhance communication so you don't have to listen to people like me with a PowerPoint presentation and I would really like to see you take advantage of that and I look forward uh, to seeing the uh, outcomes. So in closing on behalf of our uh, Secretary uh, General, Mr. Stock, welcome to Singapore and please do enjoy the challenges facing you. Thank you.